Jimmy Johnson did what he needed to do on Sunday at Homestead, his fourth consecutive title. Welcome to you, our NASCAR report, Lauren Shahadi. Pete Pistoni joining us now. Pete, were you surprised at all with how the 48 team handled it all? You know, it's funny, Lauren. I've sat here and watched history. I mean, and I think it didn't really hit me until I drove out of the racetrack last night. I mean, this team has done something that, you know, we've never seen before in NASCAR. And when you think about it, you have to put them kind of on the same page as other sports dynasties, you know, whether you want to be the Yankees or the Lakers or the Celtics. I mean, you pick one. We witnessed it here, and I think this championship, there might be some people who are Jimmy Johnson haters, Lauren, that I think uh, will come out of this, if not this week, but as they go down the road and look back at this and give it the kind of, I would say, reverence and kind of uh, do that it deserves. Because, as I said, it was a privilege for me to be here and witness history. How can you not pay attention to that? With all the fuss about Johnson, what about Rick Hendrick became the first owner to have drivers sweep the top three spots in the standings? How cool is that? How impressive, Pete? I mean, it's, again, something that has never been done in the sport from a guy who has done, you know, pretty much everything in the sport. As you said, nine Spring Cup Series championships, and they have three drivers finish one, two, three. I mean, just a remarkable achievement. And, again, I think a testimony to Rick Hendrick, the dedication. And the one thing you always go back to when you talk about Hendrick Motorsports, Lauren, is the people that he brings to work there. You know, uh, the drivers are all great, and they do a great job, but the people that make those cars go fast and support that team, uh, Rick Kendrick just has a knack for bringing all that talent into his organization, and he did it again this year in a history in a history making season. That's right. So Johnson is celebrating. Hendrick is celebrating. What about Denny Hamlin? His fourth victory of the year. Are we going to see him contend for a title next year? Well, his first words out of his mouth yesterday when he went to Victory Lane for the fourth time this year is he wants to be down there, and he pointed to where Jimmy Johnson was getting set up for the victory celebration championship. You know, when I look at next year, I know obviously it's very early. I would have to say that Joe Gibbs Racing is probably second on the pecking list in terms of the rankings uh, in behind Hendrick Motorsports. So they have kind of turned things here at the end of the season. Denny Hamlin winning on a regular basis. Kyle Busch has been kind of up and down, missed the chase, but his new crew chief, Dave Rogers, and Kyle Busch, I think that's a good tandem. And let's not leave out Joey Logano, who, by the way, Lauren, became the youngest driver in NASCAR history at age 19 to win the Rookie of the Year. So I think everything's pointing in the right direction for Joe Gibbs Racing to maybe challenge Hendrick for a title next year. Wow, and we'll see if Denny Hamlin can get down there where Jimmy Johnson was, where he wants to be. There were some fireworks. Of course, there always are between Tony Stewart and Juan Pablo Montoya. But after the Nationwide Series race and the scuffle that took place between uh, Brad Keselowski and Denny Hamlin, do you think NASCAR handled it all okay? Well, you know what? I think the one thing that NASCAR has done in these situations is if they can, they'd like the drivers to handle this themselves. Now, that's not to say they want them to go out on the racetrack and run into each other, and they'll step in when they have to. But, you know, I think what we saw in Saturday's Nationwide Series race with Denny Hamlin taking out Brad Keselowski, I mean, he got a one-lap penalty for aggressive driving. That's pretty consistent with what NASCAR's done over the years with aggressive driving. Now, yesterday in the cup race, as you said, Montoya and Tony Stewart got together, and Montoya was warned over the radio not to do anything, yet he did, and retaliated, and that's why he got a two-lap warning. I personally think, and you and I have talked about this before, a little spice, a little rivalry, not bad at all. And maybe next year, maybe we'll see a little bit more of this kind of thing. I think more fans will get into it. I don't want to see anything bad happen on the racetrack, but there's nothing wrong with a couple of drivers not liking each other in the world of stock car racing. That's right. It's a little bit of healthy competition, which means next year, that means you have a couple months off. What are you going to do with your time, Pete? Well, you know what? You know how the offseason is in NASCAR. We'll probably sure. open our Christmas <laughs> presents. And before you know it, we'll be at Daytona for Speed Week. So, uh, can't wait. It's been a great season, Lauren, and we're looking forward to 2010. Again, it'll be right around the corner before we know it. That's right. We will keep you posted right here on CBSSports.com. We'll talk to you soon.